if you've noticed in our culture today that honor seems to be lost in many ways. It seems to be something on a decline. Uh, when I grew up, uh, my parents grew up from, you know, uh, from their parents. And my grandfather, he'd wear a hat. And what you do is you respect someone, you tip their hat to them. And they would go to church on Sunday. I grew up Presbyterian. And uh, we were very, you know, we'd, we'd stand up, sit down. It was, it was a good upbringing. And uh, what would happen is the men took off their hats in church. I mean, that's just what you did. And when you came on Sunday, you had to wear a tie, you had to wear a suit because God deserved our best. And so I grew up with that. So I wore a tie. I also grew up saying, yes, sir, yes, miss, yes, ma'am. No, not ma'am. That's from the South. But yes, sir, yes, miss. And I was taught to open a door for a lady, then to show her honor, not to say that she's weaker, but to say, hey, she's made in the image of God and women are a blessing to our culture. They're the ones that carry children. I'm going to show honor to them and open the door for the women I was told to do. Right? And so it was considered sacrilege to wear jeans in church. Uh, and so today things have changed. Now, today you've got people leading worship with a baseball cap on. Now, my grandparents would freak out if they saw that today. It's so dis but our culture has changed. It no longer means that anymore in our culture. But when I was growing up, in the early part of my upbringing, it did mean something. In fact, I was at a place, I was selling uh, books in Texas uh, during college in a place called. Um, Center Texas is a, a town of 4,000 people, and I was selling uh, Bibles <laughs> door to door. Yeah, I was a door to door salesman, and I wore shorts. And a preacher said, Are You wearing the word of God in a pair of shorts? You know, and I said, Hey, it's like 100 degrees out. I wear a robe every Sunday. I'm like, Okay. And so that was considered disrespectful at the time. Of course, I didn't really care back in those days, and I even had a mullet to top it off. So, yeah, that was. Uh, it was crazy. But, you know, the, the, the culture has changed. And what was once dishonorable is no longer dishonorable anymore. We could become a very casual society in that regard. But there's something that's been lost in our culture. There seems to be, obviously, a lack of, a lack of civility and also a lack of honor for those God has put before us and above us. To such a degree that we become a rebellious society at large. We become to be critics our job is to critic our covering. Whatever our covering is, we want to criticize it and poke holes in it. And this is what's been happening in our culture today. And as a result of that, we're suffering the consequences which we're going to share about today. God has a lot to say about honor. And we're supposed to be a people that live with honor. What does that mean, with honor? We'll talk about it today. If you want to open your Bibles, please. Uh, I'm going to start in Malachi verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. I don't have time to get into all of the... Uh, of the culture of the day, but this is uh, the last book before Matthew. It's about, about a 500 year gap between Malachi and Matthew, and they were under subjection. They didn't have their own nation anymore. But anyhow, Malachi speaks about honor. And uh, we'll be spending some time talking about that. So this is what he says Malachi 1, verse 6 A son honors his father, and his servant his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I'm a master, where is respect due me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you, O priest, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? How have they done that? They have not shown honor to the leadership that God has placed upon them. We're going to get to it in a few more moments. In Malachi uh, 2, verses 1 through 2. And this is now on a mission for you. O priests, if you do not listen... And if you do not set your heart to honor my name. You see, there's something connected with a son honoring a father and, and honoring your master. You're not honoring me if you're not honoring the covering I have placed upon you. And if you don't honor that, you're under a curse. Now, I'm not saying a curse is some witch, <laughs> you know, with a little broom and putting incantations. No, a curse is vo things void of God. A curse is not having God's blessing upon us. A curse is when God's protection and his hands of protection are lifted off us or circumstances have it your way. In fact, in, as far as I'm concerned, one of the scariest verses in the Bible is found in Romans 1. God gave them up to a reprobate mind. He says, I'm done. Okay, you want to do it this way, I'm going to let you have it your way. And that's, my friend, is often a curse void of God. Because why? God is there to bring health and healing. The enemy brings destruction. And so we talk about that. So what does honor mean? I mean, we, we could go on and on about it, but there's various things that honor means. Honor is giving weight 
and consequence to something. Okay, I grew up uh, as a child, and I'm not saying, I know things have changed, but I always called someone by Mr. 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 Johnson, Mr. Carlson. I, I, just, I just call that. Even to this day, uh, Pastor Howard, who is the founder of Cornerstone Church, when I see him, I call him Pastor Howard. I, I, I try to call him Howard. I can't do it. Why? I just grew up that way. But I recognize the culture's changed. And I recognize that titles don't mean the same as they used to mean. But there's something about saying that. And my, my children went to school for a period of time. They called you know, Mr. Miss this, Mr. Bucci, and everyone's there at a last name. And there's, there's like honor given to people. And there's something to be said about that. It seems now it's just like there's not much honor, not much reverence anymore for God or for people. Oh, he's a cop. Oh, he's a pig. Oh, well, how about he's an officer. She's an officer. Give him respect to that. I know when I see the military, anytime I see the military, I always will go up to them and shake their hand and say, thank you for serving our country. Thank you for being willing to lay down your life for our freedom. I always appreciate it because they laid down their lives for us. That's showing honor and respect. Showing honor to, to the elderly. If, if you're on a, you know, if I'm on a subway train or something in New York and I sit down, I'll get up and give it to the lady. I'll give it to the older person. I even help old ladies cross the street with the Boy Scouts. Um, I'm just kidding. You guys are not too awake yet. Okay, but anyhow... This is part of the honor that happens. And so honor is giving weight, value. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Did you know part of love is honor? It is. Part of the definition of love is honor. So for God so honored the world that he gave Christ. I've never seen anyone come to Christ by showing them dishonor, which is for another week. I've never seen anyone come to Christ by showing them dishonor. Jesus always showed honor to those that came to him. Think about it. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right? He, he showed us honor. The woman at the well, he showed her honor. Zacchaeus, a scumbucket tax collector, he showed honor. Zacchaeus, come to my house today. So Christ, God is all about honor. And so if we're going to be Christ-like, we need to learn about honor. So honor is giving value, weight, what is dishonor? It was the opposite. It's to take lightly. Ah, it's no big deal. It's just dad. Ah, it's just my father. Oh, it's just my man. Oh, it's just the president. Oh, it's just the, and the other. And listen, I, I like to watch news too, but you know, these news agencies have to keep on the air and they have to make it entertaining. They just do. And so they, they report the news with some banter and they, they report the news with some zeal and they report the news with negativity because it sells. No one wants to hear how someone just got a brand new house. They want to hear how people lost their house in a fire. They want to learn about So what do we do? We talk about our president, who you may disagree with, but they make fun of him. They make fun of President George Bush, right? And so we make fun of politicians, we, and we laugh about it, and then we get caught doing the same thing. You know what we're basically doing? We're hurting ourselves, because that's our covering. Now let's, we'll get into it in a few moments about that. But I wanted to show you a couple of things here today. Very, very, very important about honor. We're going to break it down even further. But I want to kind of give us a start off with Jesus. I always think it's good to start off with Jesus. So if you want to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, we have a lot of scripture today, if that's okay with you. Uh, if it isn't, I'm sorry. I want to honor you. But uh, I, I think scripture has a lot more to say than I do. So I always like to look at scripture. Uh, it's an amazing thing. And I want to encourage you once again, every day get into the word of God. Okay, Mark chapter 6, verse 1. Then he, that's Jesus, went out from there and came to his own country. And his disciples followed him. And when, they, and when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is that which has been given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Now, I just want to stop there for a moment. It's very interesting that Jesus grew up for 30 years, probably under his father's tutelage, taking over the family business. Jesus lived under authority for 30 years. Authority that he was superior to. His own parents were not as perfect as he was. Right? The Roman government, the religious system of his day was not higher than he was. But he subjected himself 
and honored the authority that was above him for 30 years. Now, finally, his time has come to start his ministry. And he wants to honor the covering he has, but the moment the covering does not honor God, he steps out of that covering under God's covering. I should do a little, I'll show you some later on, but God is the ultimate covering, and all the other coverings are what God has established. So you should be a cover girl. And I'm a cover man. We should be undercover, under the cover of God's authority. So what does Jesus say? But Jesus said, I want you to pay attention to this, verse 4. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. There's a pastor that I know that says, I could have the most outstanding sermon. I could come out of there, and I felt like the second coming was going to happen. And I get in the car of my wife, and in one word, she tears me down. <laughs> and he said, you know, where's the honor? Where's the honor? And, uh, and as it says, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, in his own house. Now, what, what's the problem with not having honor? Well, you're going to see something here if you haven't seen it before. Now, he could do no Christ could do no what? Mighty work there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. In other words, the blessings of God were sabotaged because people did not honor Jesus. They, ah, it's just the carpenter's son. Ah, it's just this. Ah, it's just the other. Ah, it's just, a, oh, it's just my parents, you know, and ah, who cares? Ah, it's just a cop. It's a, oh, it's just a teacher. It's just a principal. It's just my boss. So let's talk about what a jerk the boss is around the water cooler or the coffee machine and how lousy it is at work here. And then as soon as the other person leaves, let's talk about how lousy they are. That's, you know what that basically does? It just hurts yourself. Jesus could do no great work because they did not honor him. When you give honor to somebody, it, it, the honor comes upon you. When you don't give honor to somebody else, dishonor comes upon you. Sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. If you don't show honor, you won't receive honor. And this is something that's become extremely popular in our culture. And the enemy's job is to bring a curse upon the church and upon society. So if he can get us to dishonor each other, guess what he gets to happen? Not many miracles take place in America today because they don't honor Jesus. You know, a lot of us, in, I'm all for it. You know, I grew up in a more structured and a more strict way. And I, I go to some churches today and I really appreciate it. I, I know I'm going to get myself in a little trouble saying this. If I offend you, I'm sorry. But I, I remember going to Italy and going to the Vatican and going to the chapel there. And I remember sensing God's presence there. Sorry. But there was a reverence for God. And I, I want to say a little church history here just for a moment. But there's something I don't like. We know what they call us non-Catholics? Protestants, which means protester. I am not a Protestant. I'm a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ. And what has happened is this. This is what happens. In our culture, what happens is what happens with our fathers it gets passed on. And this is what I've noticed. At the moment I'm not happy with you, I'm going to pack up my marbles and go down the street and start another church because I'm a protester. I don't honor the structure and the authority that God has placed. And this is what we do all the time. This is why we see constantly in the Protestant, our faith, constantly splitting in new churches. Blah, 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 blah. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Then you have a Catholic church where they have a, a spirit of unity. So what is it all about? And how are we supposed to handle this honor? What happens when people act dishonorable? What are we supposed to do with that? Well, I'm so glad the Bible tells us what to do with these things. But I believe, I believe if you will honor God, God will honor you. Now, let me make something abundantly clear. We're not talking about salvation. You cannot pay for your salvation. Christ paid for it for you. But you can receive the benefits by being a son and daughter by honoring your parents. If my parents said, I want you can, you're able to take the car out, but I want you to drive the speed limit, and I want you to be home by 9 o'clock. If I get a speeding ticket and come home at 10 o'clock, I have not honored my parents. And what happens? They still love me, but what happens? They took the keys from me. 
because I didn't honor them. Right? You see how that works? So that we were talking about works. We're under grace. Grace is what saves us. Saves us to do good works. And make, make, make no mistake, your actions and my actions have consequences. They really, really do. He says, he could do no mighty work except that he could heal the sick, a few sick people. Do we not see that today? I believe if you and I will learn to be a people that honor God and honor the authority he's placed above us, including government officials, including a Governor Malloy, including people you don't necessarily agree with, and you show honor to them. It doesn't mean we walk around as serfs. We don't walk around as, okay, whatever they say. No, we're, we're called to be salt and light, but we are called to do it in a respectful way. Even Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or my Shack, your Shack, and a bungalow, whatever you want to When Nebuchadnezzar said, I want you to, he says, oh, great Nebuchadnezzar. They said, oh, great king. They showed honor to him. I'm sorry, but we cannot comply with what you're saying. And they went into the fire. But what did they do? They showed respect. I'm going to jump ahead in my notes just a little bit, guys, because I'm talking about respect here. If you could jump ahead, uh, the slide, guys, uh, to Jude. This is what I've also found. I've also found that a lot of people don't, or don't honor the spiritual realm. I've been in prayer meetings where we talk about the devil. We're going to kick him in the teeth. I'm going to show Satan. I hear all this nonsense and, you know, oh, Satan, he's under my feet. He's under my feet jumping up and down on a picture of Satan and, and, and not showing respect. And you're saying, well, isn't that what we're supposed to do? No, it's stupid. Let me show you this in the scripture. I, I can say stupid. The kids aren't here. Okay, look at this. In uh, Jude 8, verse, uh, verse Jude, which is only one chapter, by the way, verse 8. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the, the body of Moses, dared not to bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they, they know naturally, like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. So, when... Michael, the archangel, was disputing with, uh, with Mo for Moses' body. He says, be gone, Satan. I'm going to kick you in the teeth. He's not Muhammad Ali trying to do a rope-a-dope. One of my favorite athletes of all time. Anyhow, that's beside the point. He wasn't trying to get them all upset. He says, be gone. I love the old foreign policy. What? Walk softly and carry a what? A big stick. The more you talk, he says, be gone. And even it, it says this in 2 Peter. 2 Peter 8, 2, and especially those who walk according to the flesh. In the lust of uncleanliness, they despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak of evil dignitaries, and that has the connotation of spiritual realms. Whereas angels are greater in power and might, do not bring reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like nature, brute beasts, may to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand, and they will utterly perish in their own corruption. It's like being in World War II or being, going on the front lines and, and then taunting the enemy. It's just stupid. You don't do that. You show respect. Even the enemy is made in the image. I know, it sounds, I know this sounds sacrilege, but please understand me. The enemy is a created being. We have to show respect for the enemy. We show respect by God by following God. We don't follow the enemy, but we have to show respect. Because if we don't show respect, there's a problem that begins to happen. The Bible says about this, that we become foolish. The enemy is cool with that. He loves the fact that we don't show respect for him either. Yes, God is stronger than the enemy. Absolutely, he's a created being. They're not two opposite forces, but we need to show respect for our adversary. Does that make, I hope I'm making sense here because the scripture talks about this. This is just something I've seen, especially in our intercession circles. Not in this church, but I've seen other people where they get all in. You know, listen, I understand that. Be gone, Satan. That's, that's cool. That's okay. But don't be running around looking to call him names and throwing sticks and stones at him. That's just dumb. You're going to get yourself whacked. And that's just the way the Bible talks about that. You're not showing respect. Now I'm going to go back, guys. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead there a little bit. 
Can I change my notes once in a while? Okay, thank you. I'm glad I can do that. You didn't say yes, but I'll just assume you did. So what, what basically happens? What, what do we see here? What do we see here? We see that familiarity causes dishonor. And offenses cause dishonor. You get, um, oh, and not just the carpenter's son. Oh, it's no big deal. I remember my dad being a pastor of the church. My dad would say, hey, do this. I'm like, whatever. I wouldn't listen to my dad because he's my father. I show dishonor not only to my father, but to the pastor of the church. I know I was a wreck growing up. Okay, it's amazing. It's amazing I'm even here. But sometimes we get familiar with God. And, and you know what's happened sometimes that there's been people that kind of prompt themselves up too much with titles and positions. But you know what? We need to honor the positions that God has placed. It's because it's God's structure we're honoring. Does that make sense? See, we're honoring God's structure. The person may act in a way that's not becoming of a person on that authority position. But if you honor that, God's grace is upon you. If you don't honor it, it's not upon you. And this is all part of learning to do that. And also, offenses cause dishonor. When someone offends me, I don't like them anymore, and I'm trying to find something wrong with them so I can have a reason to justify my ill feelings towards that person. It happens in marriage all the time. Once you're agitated with your spouse or your children, you begin to focus on all, and once you're agitated with your boss, everything, right? And you start focusing on those things, and you have dishonoring thoughts. And, and my friends, what happens up here ends up happening here, which ends up happening here. Mind, heart, hands. That's how it works. Mind, heart, hands. So that's why it's so important to show honor in our minds towards people. And then when you have that feeling, oh, you know what? God, you placed him over me. That's my boss. This is the president of the United States. This is the governor. This is, this is whoever it is. I'm going to show respect because of the honor. I'm going to show respect to that officer. Even though that officer acted in an unbecoming way, he's still an officer. She's an officer. This is lost. Isn't it scary what's happening with police? police people today being shot at now are there ugly ducklings out there sure are there bad cops absolutely but that's not a way to get honor by showing dishonor peacefully protest like martin king martin luther king jr did not burning things down that's just counterproductive can you imagine coming home all of a sudden you you go downstairs the couches are burning the tv's burning what's going on you won't let us watch our tv program i mean how stupid is that you could be in a homeless shelter on the community television if you don't watch it. So it's just silly. You have to show honor. But the foundation of authority comes from God. Let me, let me just begin. Let's, let's bring it back to the very beginning. Honor comes from God. God is the ultimate person we are to honor. He's a person. He's a, he's a personality, okay? And what is the first thing the Bible says? Ephesians uh, 6, 2 through 3 actually quotes uh, Exodus and says this, honor, perfect timing. Honor your father and mother. <laughs> My son just walked in. <laughs> Do I not, is that not the Holy Spirit working? I take. <laughs> honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. The Ten Commandments, the big God's big ten. The first, the first four commandments deal with you and God. The second deal with us, with people. And what's the first? You got to honor God. He's the first in everything. We honor God. That's how you honor God. You give Him the best. You give Him the first. You give Him yourself. You honor God by honoring Him back. Then what's the first thing? Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you. Do we see people honoring their parents today in our society and at large? Does this? I mean, I know the Simpsons are funny, okay? But does Bart? honor his mother and father? Does modern family honor the parents? No. Does our culture honor parents? No. And what happens as a result of not honoring that? What happens? It doesn't go well with us. Do you see that? You and I should be exemplary about showing honor. And this should be a place, and I'm praying it becomes more that place, a place that we honor each other because God, we're made in God's image. Everyone deserves honor to a certain level and a certain degree. It doesn't mean we walk around as pacifists. Oh, I honor you. Go ahead, go ahead, beat me up, kill me. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about giving honor. Do what Jesus did. And I, I want to talk more about this probably next week. I can't get into it. I want to give us the basis foundation. And we're going to build upon that, okay? So, honor your mother and father. This is the first commandment with the promise. 
If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you. You have a long life on the earth. I want to go ahead and look at a couple of things. You know what Jesus told Pilate? Pilate says, don't you know I have the power? And what does Jesus say? I love what he says. He says, don't you realize that I have the power, for John 19 to 10 11, don't you realize I have the power to release and crucify you? And Jesus says something very true. You wouldn't have no power over me unless it were given to you from above. Now, did Jesus call him a jerk? He did call Herod a fox, though. I, I, I do quote that one all the time. Okay. And what does it say in Romans uh, 13, 1 through 9? Everyone, everyone, you know what everyone means in Scripture? Come on, you guys are scholars here. We know, that we, we do this all the time. Everyone means everyone. Everyone must submit. That means your mission must come to um, someone else's mission. Submit to governing authorities. Do you realize the Apostle Paul wrote this when the government was a whole lot worse than ours? They were rounding people up and killing them. Okay? We have a much, much, much better government than they had in those days. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities. If you see me dropping over 55, it's a little different. God gives grace. Okay. For all authority comes from God. All authority comes from where? From the electorate? From MSN, and MSNBC? From Fox News? No. Where does it come from? It comes from God. It comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by a vote. By who? By God. Who is the president of the United States right now? President Barack Obama. Guess who put him there? God. You may not agree. You may not like the positions they have. Guess who was the previous president prior to him? George W. Bush. And before that, Clinton. Before that, Reagan. All right? They were all, God allowed them to be there. So, what good does it do? I'm going to ask if Michael can make his way up. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to just give a little illustration here just to kind of help us out just a little bit. Michael, thank you. Michael, give Michael a big round of applause. He wears a tie like a good Christian boy. I appreciate that. I... All right, this is what we're going to do, okay? Now, I know. I'm going to try to help us understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, these are called umbrellas. You know what umbrellas do? They, they, they cover you, right? So, imagine this. This is an umbrella. This is like authority covering. If it's raining outside as I stand under this umbrella, this is a covering that has been provided for me. If I honor this umbrella by staying under it, guess what happens? Go ahead. Just, just a little bit. Not too much, though. Watch that knife. Glad you're not wearing shorts. Okay. <laughs> okay. What happens here? That protects me, right? Okay. That's a covering. Thank you so much. Don't, don't go away yet. Now, what happens if I start speaking bad? It's not a switchblade. It's legal. Okay. Well, well, you know what? I don't like the boss. I don't. You know, you know I, I think the president, I think he's lame. Ugh. You know, I don't even like the assemblies I'm under. You know, you know what? Mom and dad, they're jerks. So I'm just going to... Okay. All right. You know, uh, my husband, he doesn't care. You're, you're at a party. You talk about your husband. Oh, my husband's no good. You know, he's always, he's always doing something. Okay, now go ahead and pour a little bit on me now. Okay. Thank you. That's enough. <laughs> All right. I hope you got the, the picture about that. We have two different opposing things. We have someone that honors and someone that shows. Don't worry. I don't always wear this. I don't have an ankle gun, uh, in case you're wondering. <laughs> but imagine this. So you have two. This is, this is showing honor. This is showing dishonor. Who gets hurt? Tell me. Who gets hurt? Who? We get hurt. Now, what about the American Revolution? What about all that? You know, this is often what I think about, too. Uh, don't we, did, didn't we rebel against England? What about that? Well, I don't have time to get into American history right now. That's another topic for another time. For those of you that, those of you that are from Great Britain, you probably would say, yeah, he's right. But 
the issue is this. When we honor God's authority, it goes well with us. If we don't honor it, we hurt ourselves. It's just the way it is. So, you know, wives, honor your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. And so we don't honor each other. We hurt each other. Why not think the best of each other? Why not hope for the best, believe in the best? Isn't that what love's all about, partially? And so what does it say here? I, I want to just continue to read this for us. And we need to understand this in our culture, especially when we're heading into an election season. And it gets really, really ugly. It really does. And, and bo both sides play the game, okay? No one's exempt from this, folks. We should be above the fray. And so the Bible says in Romans 13, 1, everyone must submit to governing authorities, for their all authority comes from God. So anyone, verse 2, anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against the government? Anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against the boss? God. Slaves obey your masters. Well, the, the Bible condones slavery? No. It, I mean, it doesn't allow, it, it, it allowed it for the time because the culture was so corrupt. But even that, give honor to those above you. And some of us feel like we're, we're slaves at work. Honor those so what does it say? So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against God. What is rebellion called? Samuel told that to Saul. I just read it this past week. It's the sin of witchcraft. What was Satan's big thing he did? He did what? He didn't show what to what. <laughs> he didn't show honor to God, but he wanted to honor himself. As a result of not showing God honor, what happened to him? That's right. He lost it. So, for the authorities, do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. Now, what happens when they don't, when they don't do that? We'll get to that in a few moments because I only have about five minutes left. The Bible says in verse 4 that the authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you're doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They're God's servants. Even if they don't believe in God, they're still God's servants, because what is the opposite of order? Chaos, anarchy. God doesn't like that. God's a God of order, not chaos. And he's writing about a government that was far cry from what we have here today. He says, um, for the government workers need, oh, this is, this, I know, this, this part I don't like, okay? Oof, here we go. Verse 5. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid a punishment, but for clear conscience. Pay your taxes. Two, for these same reasons, for the government workers need to be paid. Oh, my, this is scandalous. They're serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. And give respect and jokes Give respect and honor to those who are in. Owe nothing to anyone except your obligation to love each other. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of the law. Love shows respect. Jesus shows respect to people that are fallen and that are away. If you want to win your spouse's love back, show respect. You want to help your children, you need to show respect to your children by disciplining them. What? Yeah. You let them do whatever they want to do, you're not respecting them because they need to know what's right and wrong. Part of love is discipline. 1 Peter 2 says the following, 2.13, Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or the governors or to those who are set by him for the punishment of evil doers for, and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. What happened with the Christian right? A Christian right was right and a lot of stuff, but the way they expressed the right wasn't always so right. It showed disrespect at times. And as a result, we got labeled to be what? Haters of, you know, the Christian right got a bad, bad label. Why? Because some people did not do a good job. I know it's not fair. You have a group of 10,000, 1,000 people, and a group of 10 people do something disrespectful, and then that gets on the front page of the New York Times. I understand that. But we have to be very careful in how we deal with authority. You know, I, I could show you a bunch of examples here, which we're going to do in a few moments. 
But the Bible says so clearly here, and uh, in 1 Peter 2, 17, honor some people. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. There it is right there. That's what we're called to do. We're called to honor each other. Every person is made in the image of God. God's handiwork is shown in them and around them. The Bible says, if you hate your brother who you do see, you cannot love God whom you do not see. How I, this, is, this, this is the scary part. How I treat Tim is how I'm treating Christ. How I treat the poor, how I treat people dying of AIDS, how I treat the people that are struggling at the homeless shelter down in Waterbury is how I treat Jesus. Am I giving them honor? Are they living a dishonorable lifestyle? Why not show them honor? God showed us honor. When we, we had the last thing we, were, we deserved was honor. God showed us honor. We're called to be like Jesus. I wish I could go further about this. I can uh, next time. But I, I just, even First Timothy talks about that. It even says in this part, I know, I'm, I'm, I didn't pad you for this. I know this sounds a little like I'm trying to prompt myself up. But the Bible's the Bible. Hebrews 13, 17 says this. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable. Oh, that part I don't like. I like the first part's cool. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Usher, take an offering. Okay. Um, I'm going to buy a plane. All right. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Okay. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them the reason to do this with joy and not sorrow, for, for that would certainly not be a benefit to you. And then Timothy talks about this. What I urge you, first of all, to complain about those. No, I urge you, first of all, to what? Pray. I thought, it, I thought you were supposed to complain first. Mm -mm. Pray for all people, people you don't like. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Thank you for the government we do have. Thank you that I pay taxes, that I have asphalt on the roads. Oh, gosh. Okay. Verse 3, this, thanks God for the car tax. Okay, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved. You never save anyone you show dishonor to. Let me get that straight. We want people to come to Christ? Show them honor. I, show me a person in Scripture that God showed dishonor to and they came to him. I, I can't find one. What about the Apostle Paul? Well, he did show him honor by showing himself to him. Rebellion is a what? It's a sin of witchcraft. Now, now, what happens if our government stands outside the bounds of the authority that God has given them? All right, very simply this. In Acts 4.18, they were, Peter and John were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the city. And they round them, hey, you got to stop doing this right now. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, guys, we can't do it anymore because, you know, we're told we've got to be submitted to the, the government. No, he didn't. What did they do? So when they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach the name of Jesus, but Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which have been seen and heard. And then they say, shut up to us. I'm sorry, but we, we must obey God rather than your, car, than your rules. Now, it's very, very tempting to say your carnal rules. Why not say, I'm sorry, I cannot comply to that. I have, I have to answer to a higher authority. And I'm not Hebrew national hot dogs, okay? That, I, have to, I have to answer to a higher authority. You guys didn't get that. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. Okay, let's just, 
Imagine for a moment uh, that umbrella once again, which I'm not going to go get, get right now. If, if what happens, if the covering I'm under no longer complies with God's covering, God says, it's okay now for you to step out of that covering. You're under my covering, but show respect to the covering you're stepping out of. Does that make sense, everyone? Come on, let's help us. This is so anti-cultural. This is so against everything, especially the uh, young culture that is uh, inundated with MTV and music and movies. It all shows disrespect to the heads of the household of fathers and mothers. It shows disrespect. All we're doing is cursing ourselves. Yeah, it may get a big laugh, but the Holy Spirit ain't laughing. I wish I had this down. I don't. Do I say things sometimes? Yes. I catch myself. I wish I didn't. I was just telling the Lord yesterday, I was praying in here for today. I said, God, I'm so tired of not being perfect. <laughs> I, I, I am so tired of not getting it right. I'm so tired of thinking and saying and doing stupid things at times. God, my whole, my whole being groans for its redemption. It really does. Can we honor God? by honoring the authority he's given us and honor each other. You know what's going to happen if we honor God? God's going to bless us. If we honor God, we're going to see more miracles in this place. If we honor God, we'll see more marriages healed. If we honor God, we're going to see more people get jobs. Now, it is not about getting stuff. It's simply this. You honor God, God will honor you. That's not the reason we do it, but there's benefits to that. Does that make sense, everybody? I hope we're getting this today. So, this to kind of sum up. This is sum up in conclusion here. Honoring begins with God. That's it. If you don't honor God, you're not going to be able to honor anybody else. Seriously. Okay. Honor begins with God's claim upon them. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Ephesians 5.21. Submit to one another out of reverence, which is honor for Christ. This is hard. Especially when someone is irritating you. Someone's a stone in your shoe. Honoring begins with God's claim on them. Second thing is, honoring benefits me too. There's benefits to honoring. And finally, honoring is decided, not deserved. Honoring is decided, not deserved. There are people that don't deserve honor. By, by you showing them honor, God will honor you. And when you're honored, you're blessed. And when you're blessed, you flow in more of God's purposes and plans. And when that happens, you're more, you're, you're talking about the wealth, and I'm not talking about the wealth gospel. The wealth gospel is living with Christ forever and ever and having peace now. That's true wealth gospel. Gospel's good news. You may not get the bigger house, a bigger house, a bigger, bigger promotion, but you know what? You get a promotion in the Spirit. God's blessings will be upon you. God wants to bless us. We are His children. He's longing for us, but He can't do it if we're showing disrespect. Now, what is the Holy Spirit saying today? Girls, it's time to be cover girls. Time to honor the covering that's on you. Guys, time to be cover guys. We need to honor God's covering upon us. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for the president. We need to pray for our governors. We need to pray for our bosses. We need to pray for our parents. We need to show honor to them. And when we show honor to them, we're ultimately showing honor to God. And if we honor God, God will honor us. And if God honors us, we're blessed. Now that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. God wants to bless us. So let's live with honor. Let's pray. Father, Thank you so much. I am so appreciative for your word. I just, Lord, this, this goes against what's in my own flesh heart. Father, we recognize today, we, we, acknowledge, we acknowledge that we are living in a rebellious culture. We're living in a culture that does not honor anything. Father, forgive us for dishonoring our bosses. Forgive us for dishonoring the president's before them and the ones now. Forgive us for showing dishonor to our parents. Lord, I know sometimes they frustrate us, but we must show honor to them. We must show honor because they are our covering. God, forgive us for showing dishonor to 
our former pastors and church leaders that we've just like to talk about at lunch and how lousy they are or whatever. And Lord, I've been guilty for myself. Forgive us for that, God. We want to honor you by honoring the covering that is above us and around us. Lord, I ask right now, as we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. I pray that you would repair the canopy, the umbrella, the covering over some of us right now. I believe God wants to repair some coverings upon you. Some of you need to make some phone calls today and say, I'm sorry. I have, I have a great story to share with you next week, or next week after. I'm really excited about it. A personal journey I had to walk through. It's easy to sit here and repent. It's hard to walk it out. Listen, God desires to show you honor. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you will open it, I will dine with you. That, that's a sign of honor in that culture that day. Uh, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? I, I believe in him. Yeah, I kind of do. There comes a point in time where you just say, you know what? I'm handing the keys to you, God. It's all yours. I give my life to you. Until you've done that, you're not saved. You're just a believer. You're just a fan of Christ. God doesn't want fans. He wants people that die to themselves and live for him. Let's pray right now. If you want to pray this prayer, you can begin a new day. Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross to pay for the sins I cannot pay for. I recognize the fact that I've been calling my own shots. I've been my own God. Today I resign immediately, effective immediately. I resign from my position of chief operating officer of myself. I step down and I declare that you are my CEO. You are my God. And I will submit by your help and by your grace to whatever you ask me to do. I thank you that I cannot save myself. You saved me through what Jesus did. But I accept that today. And by your grace, I want to walk by your power. I want to walk the path you have before me today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask the prayer team to make their way up. And if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you to come up and share it with somebody. Uh, we, have a, we have a course we have every Sunday morning. First service is called 10 Steps Closer to Christ. I really want to encourage you. We'll talk more about it in the future. But otherwise, uh, let's ask for one closing song. And uh, let's ask the prayer team to make their way up, okay? God bless you. Thank you for being attentive today. Thank you for honoring God's word by listening. You'll be blessed by that. Amen. bless you today. May his honor be upon you as you honor him in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.